that we live in an entirely new therapeutic landscape characterized by a veritable tsunami of novel drug, antibody, cellular, and transplant therapies, which promise to entirely to transform the treatment of AML and outcome for our patients. With this opportunity comes the challenge, indeed the obligation, for us all to rethink how we most effectively and rapidly assess these new ther therapies so that we ensure patients can benefit from them as quickly as possible. I believe there's no one who has done more to teach us how to do this than David Grimwade. Born in 1962, David trained in Oxford University and St. Mary's Medical School. Inspired by his hematology training at UCL and under the mentorship of Tony Goldstone and David Lynch, David's doctoral thesis had immediate impact and led to the formulation of the MRC cytogenetic criteria, more affectionately termed the Grimwade classification, describing the prognostic impact of presentation karyotypic abnormalities in AML. Subsequently, and now leading his own lab at Guy's Hospital, David's group delivered highly original basic research into the pathogenesis of APML, at the same time as pioneering the application of measurable resi residual disease assessment in its management in trials led by Alan Burnett and Nigel Russell. More recently, he was among the first to extend this principle to AML in general and to stem cell transplantation, and his publications in the New England Journal, JCO and Blood, of the ability of meticulously performed disease-specific transcript quantitation on tailoring therapy in AML had a global impact and was a tangible example of how advances in basic science could be rapidly applied at the clinical front line. So in this era when we are at long last reaping the therapeutic reward of the investment of literally trillions of pounds, dollars, euros of taxpayers' money into basic science over the last 60 years, what lessons can we learn from David's life? I think many. Firstly, David was an adventurous scientist who was fascinated by the biology of leukemia and he had the vision to see that advances in basic science were potentially of immediate relevance to patient care. Secondly, because he embedded himself in the workings of a functional UK AML working party and was prepared to tolerate the uninformed skepticism of some less enlightened clinical colleagues, he also intimately understood the nitty gritty practicalities and challenges of day-to-day -day AML management and the vital importance of pragmatism if scientific advances were to be integrated into day-to-day -day patient management. And as a result of these twin insights, David was one of the first to recognize that integrating clinical genomic and trial data can transform uh, patient outcomes. And the simple principle that it was vital such studies were prospective and not retrospective and they were founded in the context of a defined therapeutic intervention. And finally, David was so driven by the obligation we all share that patients should benefit as urgently as possible from these new opportunities that it seemed never a weekend would pass without an email from him advising one on MRD results for a specific patient recommendation on when the next sample should be taken, <laughs> and alerting one to the individualized therapeutic implications. In doing so, David demonstrated that for translational hematology to really work, it was just not enough to state in the protocol that diagnostic and follow-up samples would be examined, expect this to happen. What is required and what he did was for leading scientists and clinicians to roll their sleeves up, interact on a weekly basis, and get on the phone if necessary to clinicians and research nurses. Above and beyond this, David, David was enormous fun. And in particular, he demonstrated indefatigable energy in the planning, execution, and subsequent peer review of a fine dinner. 
Not only was the location for where one would dine meticulously planned, the menu choices relished, and the wine list scrutinized with the attention and detail you might give to the design of PCR primers, but the evening would roll along like an unstoppable river. For as long as I can remember, he and I made it a tradition to drink a bottle of Paul Draper Ridge Zinfandel on the Thursday night of Ash, immediately after we had landed after a long transatlantic flight. However, I have to admit that by 2200 Pacific Standard Time, 0600 GMT, I would be welcoming the hovering of the waiter with what I hoped would be the bill allowing us to slink off to our hotel to sleep, only for the waiter to be dismissed by David with a wave of his hand and instruction to come back with the list of liqueur coffees. <laughs> he was therefore, apart from his scientific brilliance, just great fun to be with, and a wonderfully inclusive, liberal, and generous friend to many of us. So, it's readily apparent to clinicians, scientists, and most importantly, patients, that this remarkable new therapeutic landscape we now inhabit demands a fundamental rethinking of what the appropriate translational infrastructure must be in 2019. As importantly, that the capacity and capability of trials infrastructures that we relied on even a decade ago, when in contrast to almost no new drugs, is simply now not fit for purpose. And so whilst the vital importance of building capacity in the form of accelerator clinical trial networks, such as those pioneered by Mary Horowitz in the USBMT CTN, which rapidly deliver transplant trials with embedded genomics and biomarker discovery, becomes an even greater priority, we also need to think differently about how we integrate science and clinical practice. For this, we can have no better example than David's daily and granular interactions between the laboratory and the clinic, his meticulous attention to detail, his infectious spirit of inquiry, and genuine academic collaboration. But most of all, his urgent recognition of the opportunity we all now have to transform patient care by working collegiately. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome Gerd Ossenkoppler to give the David Grimwade Memorial Lecture. Good, thank you.